Can you believe that, guys? Ten years we've been doing this. Ten years we've been promoting the dignity of life here in Los Angeles. Today, more than ever, we have to celebrate the gift of life. Amen? Amen. We live in this culture of death. They don't understand that each human being is formed in the image and likeness of God, and we're here to proclaim the truth today. And so we're so grateful for all of you for coming here far and wide from different places, different towns, maybe even out of state, just to be here with us today. So please remember, as you guys are enjoying your day, you're walking around, you're meeting new people, take pictures, post them on Instagram, use social media. Let's tell the world that we're here, out here celebrating life. So our handle is at One Life LA, and if you can uh, tag us at hashtag One Life LA, that's O N E, the actual word One, One Life LA, so that we can reshare our photos and again proclaim the good news. Fontana, I'm from Rancho Cucamonga, so I'm next door to you. Where else? Where else are you coming from? Brooklyn. USC. Hey, USC. Reno Valley in the house. Brooklyn. Reno Valley. Brooklyn. Where else? Upland. 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 One more time. Paris, California. I thought you were going to say Paris, France. Paris, California in the house. Any, anyone from out of state today? There might be one. There might be one or two groups coming. Maybe they're, they're not here yet. But we just want to welcome everyone for being here. And today we got a special. We got a very very special uh, gift for us. We got this awesome band here, who I've actually had a pleasure of meeting before. Good morning. There we go. See with us. Let's be witnesses today. Amen. Amen. If you don't know the songs, you're going to learn them quick. They're easy. All right? Don't even. Yeah, I already know.
I want to say to you that I'm a convert to Catholicism. I came into the church as a child at age 12. I was the only Catholic in my family. And in that family is where I learned that we can live in love in an ecumenical sense. Not everybody else in the family was Catholic. I was, but we all love the Lord and love one another because of that. And even after, and, and my coming into the church was really a sign of God's mercy. But later on in life, you know, like I said, I came in as a child at 12. Later on in life when I was married, I was at Mass. And I remember we were saying the Creed. And we came to that part where you say, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. And as I was saying those words, I, ha I heard a voice say to me, are you lying? Are you blaspheming? How can you say you believe that the Lord is the giver of life when you do nothing to defend God's gift of life? And let me tell you, you don't want that kind of mini chastisement from God. <laughs> it brought me to my knees. My husband was like, what are you doing? Because you know, it was during the Holy Mass and I just fell. And it was at that moment that I was so convicted and desired to know more about what God teaches about the human person and why. And in my quest for this truth, this beauty, scripture came to me, Genesis 126 to 28, when God said, let us make man in our image and likeness. And sometimes we say these words and we hear that scripture, but we really need to meditate on it. Because what does it mean to be made in God's image and likeness? Me, you, Every single person born across the ocean of time made in the image and likeness of God. That God himself took on human flesh and was God while still in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. What does that mean? It means that we have a dignity that probably we cannot even understand. But what it also means is that there's nothing that you or I can do to negate the truth of who we are. We cannot by our actions or thoughts undo or make untrue what God has said is true. So what does that mean for us? We need to look at every single person, whether they are likable or lovable in our opinion and realize they are worthy of dignity and respect because they're made in the image and likeness of God. So the next time you're ready to speak ill of someone or to hate on someone, or think less of someone, or let's say something like, oh, they're a murderer, they're a liar, they're a thief. No, they are a child of God made in his image and likeness. And if we believe this, 
then that ought to inform how we treat every person, regardless of what they have done. I mean, look at what God has done for us despite us being his enemy through our own free choice to sin. He went to the cross and died for us out of love so that we might have a chance at heaven. Who are we then to not love those the Lord brings in front of us, those who blaspheme him, those who ridicule us, those who mock us, those who hurt us? We are to remember that scripture and ask God for the strength and the guides to love as he wills us to love. And these words I'm saying to you aren't just pretty words, easy words. I know the difficulty of trying to follow what it is that we say is true. Now listen, even before God gave me that little mini chastisement, I thought I was a good Catholic. I was going to mass on Sunday. I was putting money in the poor box. I go to the soup kitchen. You know, all these exterior things that make us feel all like I'm good with God. But in that moment where God gave me that mini chastisement, he held up the mirror. He said, if you love me, girl, what are you doing? I had to really look more interiorly to say, well, how am I loving the Lord? How am I serving the Lord? What do I believe about what God tells us about who we are? And from that, I have to tell you, it was the most liberating experience and also an invitation to suffer. Because when you start to follow and believe and take up your cross, the road to Calvary is not an easy one. But we know after Calvary is that great getting up day. We know there's that day of resurrection we'll be with Christ. And so we're to persevere in faith based in love. And we are to remember that every person from the moment of conception to natural death, no matter what they have done or will do, the truth is, they are made in the image and likeness of God and are our brother and sister. We are one human family because we have that one common ancestor in God. And sin has made us lose sight of this truth. Sin has caused us to try to break the bonds of the human family. We want to make repair for the harms of the sins of our ancestors because we love God. And we want to say, Lord, we are sorry. How can we make things better? Well, by heeding his word, by doing his will and not ours. And I want to just tell you a quick little story before my time is up, that even though we think, you know, we're believing in God and we are entitled to walk a certain way, it does not mean we are free from temptation. It does not mean we are free from suffering. Because see, I was a faithful pro-life Catholic. I believed in all those things. I practiced not the family planning. I was with my husband freely, openly, and yet we could not conceive. And I will tell you, it was a extreme difficult period of going without. And so when the doctor said to me privately, without my husband present, you know, we could do something about that. You could do things this way. You deserve a child. And that's when I knew the devil was speaking, because no one deserves. It is a gift freely given to us by God. And so I said to the doctor, no, I can't do it that way because that's not according to God's plan. And the doctor looked at me like I was a fool. But I will tell you the temptation was strong. The devil was in my ear saying, who's going to know? You're a good Catholic. You and your husband are married. You're pro-life. You deserve a child. You should do this. And I was so heartbroken. I told my husband, please leave me. Find a wife who can give you a child. And he laughed and he said, nope. Neither one of us are getting out of this marriage alive. You stuck with me. And it was then that we realized, you know, the gospel, what the Lord says is for all of us. And we persevered in prayer and accepted God's will. And through the glorious mercy and graciousness of God, I was blessed with a child. Come in here, Lourdes, who's now 14, 13 years old. And during my pregnancy, the doctors told me to abort because I was too old and my baby was going to be ill. And I said, nope, we're having whatever God gives us. And so I wanted to share with you what happens when you persevere. There's that blessing from God. So thank you. Persevere and remember, you are made in the image and likeness of God. And do his will, not your own. Amen. Thank you, Gloria. What a beautiful blessing, right? Uh, if you want, uh, please listen to Gloria's podcast on your favorite app.
home. home. They asked me to come today yeah. to tell a story, to tell my story. But my story cannot be complete if I don't talk about this wonderful person in our lives. A beautiful mom, a wonderful sister, a wonderful daughter, but especially an amazing human being. I was privileged to be her husband. She cannot be here with us today, but I'll tell you why. I met Veronica long time ago, but when we were young, she was an activist. She was all about helping people, caring for the needy, caring for the people that didn't have a voice. And she wasn't even real Catholic. But one time, her mom invited us to a retreat and we felt the Lord calling us. We got married and we decided to start our family. Our firstborn, Xavier, came. And then we came across a couple that teach natural family planning method called Billings. And we fell in love with the fact that we are procreators with our Lord. That we are, we, me, we, we as a couple work with him. And we decided to continue to have children. And then came Grace. As Grace came, we came across, as all you know, uh, Eduardo Verastigui's video, The Abortion. Um, and all the inhumane things that were done. And her and I, we talked about it, we saw it, and she said to me, so what do we do now? And I said, well, I don't know. So she went to our, to, to our church, and our church, they said, they have a ministry, so we started a ministry, and then uh, in the ministry, we started working with 40 Nights for Life. She many times brought homeless girls to our house, to our two bedroom apartment. She one time brought a family of 10 to a, um, a two bedroom apartment, which we lived across the, 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 across the hall from the, from the manager. And that was her, she had this humongous heart. She knew so many people, she knew how to contact, how to get them resources. And you no, know, I was just so proud of seeing her work the way that she worked. In, in, in December of, of 2019, she got COVID, and then um, after you know, get, she got sick. She went. We took her to the hospital with our sixth baby. She she was pregnant with our sixth baby, and um, three days after the baby was born, she passed. But the whole time that she was in the hospital, she was always calling people that were sick and worrying about the baby and not herself. The community. It was hard. The community. You know, grabbed, grabbed us, loved us, and prayed for us. And we continue now to work with the community in our, in our Spanish prayer group where her mom and her dad are the leaders. And we, as their children, we continue to push. And we know that she's interceding up there for us. And last, I want to thank One Life LA. I want to thank One Life LA from the bottom of my heart, from Xavier, Grace, Yomara, Giovanni, Trinity, Imani, Evan, Hazel, Zoe, uh, Alex, Bella, Ischel, Jay, and Ever. And um, there's one, and I, for, I forget, now I'm nervous. There's one reading, and I'm really quick before I go. And it says, from Joshua 24, 15, As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Let's hear it for Jorge. And Jorge, thank you so much for honor. Please, please let us welcome Nelly. Thank you, LA. It is so nice to be speaking with you guys today. Even though it's so, so cold, it's nice to see us all persevering out here in the goodness of God. My name is Millie Nelson, and I'm 21 years old. I was adopted through foster care, much like many, as I'm sure you all know here today. My story of my life was rather rough. When I was born, I was not brought into a loving family. It was quite the opposite. On April 6, 2002, I was born to a single mom who was hopeless, homeless, and helpless, and in serious need. We were on our own in the world, and I needed her care. And just when I thought I should have received that from her, I was sadly mistaken. My mother, instead of caring for me, brought me to others who she knew, either friends, other family members, and sometimes even strangers, abandoning me in my time of need. Every so 
so often she would come back just to drop me off with somebody else when I truly just needed her. I was sick, malnourished, and in need of the Lord's help because no one else was there for me. Soon, the Lord rescued me and whisked me off to a loving Christ Center foster family. This family was thankfully recruited with the help of Foster All, who you can see over here today supporting me still to this day. God put me right where I needed to be as I started to grow more healthy and happy. Um, by the grace of God, I was finally in a place where I was being loved personally. The foster care system found my father eventually and placed me back into his care, but that was short-lived because soon after only six months, he too abandoned me. I then knew again that I needed the Lord's help. And by the grace of God, again, he came straight for me when no one else would and brought me right back to that very same first foster family. As I grew up, I began to appreciate the Lord's hand in my life more and more and all he had done for me. In the process of growing up, going to Christmas parties and picnics and participating in events run by Foster All and their amazing supportive team, I felt so much more included and comforted knowing that I wasn't alone. There are more families like mine who have given children second chances they desperately needed, and an organization that didn't just aid in the adoption process, but continued to support the families involved beyond just signing the papers. This was Foster All. Foster All continues to be involved in my life to this very day, and it's through them that I am here speaking to you all today. By the grace of God, I thank not only Foster All, but my family here with me tonight. Thank you all. Thank you, Millie. Please give it up for Millie. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. He has been a long-time worship leader, and he's phenomenal, so give it up for Francis Cabildo. Let's make some noise, One Life. So good to be here with you. Thank you for, for braving the rain, supporting life, protecting life. Witnessing to the beauty and the joy of life, what a gift it is to be alive. Let us just celebrate as we close this uh, beautiful event. All right, guys? Sing with us if you know the songs. If you're not, dance around, have a good time. Let's do it for the Lord. Yeah. Sing this. I'll teach you the chorus. All praise to God the Father, all praise to Christ the Son, all praise to the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome, the King who was and is and evermore will be, in Jesus' mighty name I believe. Let's try that again. All praise to God the Father. All praise to Christ the Son. All praise to the Holy Spirit. Our God has overcome the King who was and is and evermore will be. In Jesus' mighty name, I
speak up for life so we go to the Lord and, and we worship him and we pray and we say holy 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 are you Lord God so let's continue this prayer as we close out the night or this this afternoon the rain's coming down I love it it's beautiful so be safe and let's just pray this song out together all right and all who've gone before us and all who will believe Sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name extends above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cry holy you are lifted
up for life and speaking up for those that don't have a voice. Amen. Dangerous. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, guys? Yeah, I, th I think for safety, I think we're, we're gonna we're gonna end it. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay. And we'll be with you. God bless you. Thank you to EWTN, El Sembrador, Incorrupto Radio, and Guadalupe Radio. And so people, are we ready for next year's One Life LA? Yes! Do you want it on a date for next year's One Life LA? Yes! All right, take out your cell phone, cover it from the rain, and put it in the calendar. So next time, in 2025, we're going to meet together to celebrate life on Saturday, January 18. So see you on the 18th, el siguiente año, nos volvemos a reunir una vez más para celebrar la vida el 18 de enero del 2025. And today is not over. Now we continue with the Refuel Mass, la misa por los no nacidos a las 5 de la tarde. So grab a coffee and make your, make your way to the cathedral. And we're going to meet there to celebrate life the life, and also celebrate the life for the unborn. Amen. Nos vemos en siguiente año. God bless everyone. One life. One life. LA. One life. LA. One life. LA. Many blessings. God bless you. Bendiciones, amigos.